Hi, my name is Sage Foley and I'm a stitcher, stylist, and designer that works in film, fashion, and theater. A few years ago, I bought Pattern Magic 1, 2, and 3 by Tomoko Nakamichi because I was just so incredibly inspired by the creative pattern drafting that was in them. And as you can see, I've actually bookmarked a couple pages that have garments on them that I would like to try to recreate. And these books actually remained on my shelf largely unused for the past couple years until I pulled this book out and went to the very back and used its pattern drafting system for a bodice sloper in my metric bodice sloper video, which I have linked below in case you want to watch. But when I was making that video, I started flipping through the books again and I came upon a garment that I really wanted to recreate. It is the bodice with a Takenoko design, also called the bamboo shoot shirt. The layers are supposed to represent the multi-layered neckline of a formal kimono. It also says that it looks exactly like the layers of a bamboo shoot, hence the name. So as any good seamstress does, I have a stash of fabrics in a box in my closet. A lot of those fabrics I actually bought when I was 18 and didn't know anything about sewing and I've culled out the stuff that is just like really low quality and that I know I'm not going to use but I do have a couple holdovers from that time and one of those holdovers is this really beautiful charmeuse fabric. It's one I decided to keep because it does actually have a really nice luxurious feel to it. When I was 18 I don't think I even knew what a charmeuse was so Needless to say, I don't remember what it was labeled as when I bought it or even where I bought it from. But I love any excuse to do some stash busting and I had actually had this fabric in mind for the bamboo shoot shirt in this book for quite a while. I thought that this garment would be a good one to recreate at first just because it's a beautiful design but it also looks a lot less complicated than some of the other patterns in this book. This book deals a lot with kind of creating these huge three-dimensional shapes and I thought that that would be a bit much for my first kind of foray into this kind of creative pattern drafting. I would say most of my pattern drafting up to this point has been pretty traditional. I haven't done a ton of like crazy creative pattern drafting. Now, I guess you could say all pattern drafting, all draping is creative, but when I say creative in this video, I mean like designs that are out of the box that you don't really see in like normal garments walking down the street. I started, of course, getting this fabric all nice and ironed. Part of this fabric actually came from part of a horrible cloak I attempted to make when I was learning how to sew. This fabric was the lining and I was perfectly happy to cannibalize this failed project for a better one. I decided that I was going to use the sloper that I made with the instructions from the back of this same book, mainly because the sloper fit me well enough without having to make major adjustments, so I just went with it because it was easy. I copied my flat pattern onto another piece of paper so I could make a paper well to put on my form. I just taped it all together and closed up my darts with tape. It actually kind of sucks making a paper towel and the paper towel and the instructions looks so much nicer than mine. And then using a sharpie I started drawing on the design lines. I tried to imitate the style lines in the book's example while paying attention to my proportions and what I thought would look best. It took a little bit of adjusting to get it right, but once I had something I was happy with, I took it off the form and started cutting down the lines. I had to extend the ends of the top style lines basically to the edge of the pattern so that they could essentially be turned into darts and so that the volume that created by the fold would be a lot more gradual and just really smoothly go out out into the rest of the garment, similar to how a dart is done. The nice thing about this is that all of the volume for the bust, which was originally created with the bust darts in the sloper, is now going to be transferred into these stylized folds instead, and they are going to create all of the volume in the garment. Now I laid the pattern out on the fabric and marked it all out. It was definitely hard to keep it in one place. Usually I don't need to pin my pattern pieces to my fabric. Actually, I usually avoid doing that, but in this case, I wish I would have, or at least use pattern weights. Every time I moved one of the pieces, all of the others would move too. I marked my fold lines and notches with a friction pin so it would all disappear and wouldn't show through from the wrong side. Then, of course, I cut everything out. Being extra careful not to go past where one piece overlaps the other because I don't want any cuts or raw edges showing on the right side after everything is folded and it put into place. I then started folding all the pieces, working from top to bottom. This was a little finicky as I had to be pretty precise and I had to go back and make adjustments here and there to make sure everything looked even. Because I wanted the folds to be held down more securely while I worked on the garment, I basted them down with tailor's thread. I then pressed them down 
and used my clapper to set them in place. Next, I cut out my back pieces and got the darts all sewn up and pressed. I used the plain back sloper pattern without any adjustments from the Nakamichi body sloper. I then sewed up the front pieces to the back pieces at the side seams and pressed open the seam allowances. Next, I put it on as best I could without a back closure and made adjustments to some of the foldings and overlaps as I needed the volume to be distributed a little bit differently. So I undid the basting where I needed to move things around and then pinned it all into place where I thought it looked best. Then I rebasted and pressed them all into their new places. The instructions then told me to secure everything by using an overcasting stitch on the seam allowances. It only told me to stitch here and there, so that's what I did. However, when I tried this on, the folds were being pulled in different places because in some spots the overcasting was holding it together, but in other places it wasn't. The folds where they were ironed weren't staying crisp and straight in place. So at this point, I decided to scrap this idea of overcasting here and there, and I decided to just go ahead and stitch the pieces together using my machine. I of course still stayed in just the seam allowances. You don't want any machine stitching to show on the right side of the fabric, but I went ahead and just stitched right along that crease line where I had ironed all of the folds down. And here you can see the difference once the folds were more securely stitched down. There's no more pulling, and it definitely looks a little bit more flattering. When it was pulled it made me look bigger. It made me look like I was too big for the shirt. When that wasn't necessarily the case, folds weren't just properly secured. Now it was actually time to start working on the lining. I decided that this was just going to be made with the same fabric as the rest of the garment. Using the Nakamichi bodice over pattern, I just cut out the unadjusted front and back pieces and stitched the dart. I also went ahead and assembled it at the side seams, pressing the seam allowances open. Before attaching the lining to the bodice, I stitched my label into the right shoulder blade area, trying to make it as straight and smooth as possible. Using my machine, I attached the front and the back using a self-facing method. This is usually what I use for necklines as it keeps everything really smooth but you also don't see any machine stitching from the outside of the garment. So now I started working on an underlap pattern piece. I knew I was going to be using a 16 inch zipper in this final garment, so I made the underlap piece 15 and a half inches long. The benefit of an underlap is that it acts as a barrier between the zipper and the skin, and I also just think it really gives the garment a professional feel. I then cut it out of the fabric twice and stitched the two pieces together, bagging them out. I made sure to press this all nice and smooth. I stitched this piece right sides together at center back to the lining. When when put into the bodice, this overlap will be on the right side of the body, the same side as the label. I then put in my centered zipper, paying mine to keep it as lined up with the top of the garment as possible. I knew that my garment was longer than 16 inches, but I knew I wanted to shorten the length at the bottom and not make any adjustments to the top. I used my friction pin to make stitch lines for either side of the centered zipper to make sure I was keeping it nice and even. Sometimes I will actually baste in a zipper before I actually stitch it in, I just didn't think that was necessary for this particular garment. At center back, I slip stitched the lining to the zipper, making sure not to go through to the right side of the garment or the lining. I then used tailor's thread to trace the edge line on the arm side. This is a sleeveless shirt, so the layers will be turned in and then slip stitched together. I then pressed it out, being careful to press the lining sleeve openings in just a little bit further than the trace line to make sure that the lining won't come out or be seen from the outside of the garment. So then I put the garment on me because I actually wanted to see how it was on me to make the hem as even as possible. So using my viewfinder as a guide, I just tried to make everything as nice and smooth as possible. Of course, since you're doing it on yourself, you're not going to probably make a perfectly even hem at this step, but I like to even it out on my ironing table later. At this point, I also pulled down my lining to make sure it was going to be nice and even with the outer part of the garment and that they wouldn't be pulling on one another up or down. As you can see from the side view, the center front hem is kind of doing this weird like flipping thing where it's flipping up. And I think part of this is because these folds being right here do add some volume to this front part. Now, the volume is great around the bust, but around your stomach, you really usually want something flat. You don't want it like pushing out more than necessary. So what I went ahead and did on my front pieces, just my front 
piece of my outer fabric. I marked in a quarter inch from the side seams and at the bottom. So basically what that means is at the bottom of the garment, I'm taking it all in by a half an inch. I then blended that line up into my side seam and then unpicked my side seam and then redid it with the front pattern piece being a quarter of inch smaller on both sides. So this is just going to help take out some of that volume that's right at the bottom of the garment and hopefully reduce some of this flipping. Then what I did is I pressed everything in, tried to make it all as straight and as nice as possible, as smooth as possible. And then I slip stitched it all together and that's it, the garment's done. So let's take a look at the garment. So this garment was actually really easy to put together. Now, what are my takeaways? I would say two major things. One is I think that using a satin kind of shows some of the imperfections a little bit easier, which is true. That's just what you're going to see with using a satin fabric for just about any project. Satin catches the lights and it's what lights and shadows will show your imperfections. Whereas if you use like a nice matte linen or cotton that doesn't have any sheen to it, it's going to not reflect that light and it's not going to draw your eyes to kind of the imperfections. But I think even still being in a satin fabric, I think it turned out pretty okay. The nice thing about this piece is that it's wrinkly on purpose usually right you avoid wrinkles because you want everything to be nice and smooth but that's what's cool about this garment is that around the chest you're making these really beautiful intentional folds wrinkles and volume one thing that I do think that the final picture when I compare the kind of final picture to my picture is it doesn't seem like they carried the darts as far as mine which I am a little bit confused about just because I did do exactly what they did. I would have preferred maybe mine to be slightly more subtle like how theirs is. I feel like theirs is just very delicate looking and mine feels slightly more overworked. I don't know if it's because I folded it all too much. I'm not really sure, but for there not to be like weird volume in other places, I did have to make adjustments. So I don't know if that's when that happened. I'm not really sure. Somewhere along the lines mine went a little bit further with the folds than theirs did I don't think this is a bad thing but that is one difference I can see from mine to the one in the book of course another takeaway I have if you want to do this is definitely to machine stitch down your seam allowances don't go the way of the overcasting I maybe you can make it work but for me it just caused way too much pulling and weird stuff happening especially around the bus overall though I think this actually came out really good I think it's so easy to be really critical of the things that you make, especially if you're planning on wearing those items. So I could sit here, I could nit nitpick things all day long, but at the end of the day, I think this is a really cool pattern. I think it's a really cool garment. I think it's unique and I made it well. I think it's so, so easy for us to be super ultra critical of ourselves. And every time I make a garment, it's a really good practice in loving what I make and not being too hard on myself. But that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys end up making this shirt as well, please tag me in it. I would love to see your guys' projects. Um, I have my Instagram linked below, but you can just find me at Fully Dressed. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.